Welcome to this video on using sets in Python. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'd like to explain what a set is and demonstrate how to create one. You'll see how to add new items and how you can remove them. And I'll also show you how to find which items two sets have in common and which items they don't have in common. But first of all, let's start by looking at how you create a set. In previous videos, we've seen that you create a tuple by using round brackets, that you create a list by using square brackets, where you create sets by using curly brackets, and then you can put all the things you want into that set. A set is a collection of items. It doesn't have any recurring items. So if you had two copies of Oliver Twist, it would still only appear once in this list here. We can set up the lists to contain whatever we want. In this case, each of the lists contains text, but we could have numbers in there as well if that's what we wanted. What you can't do is change an item in a list once that item has been created. So, for example, if we discovered that we'd spelt Appleby wrong, we couldn't change finding Henry Appleby here. What we'd have to do is to remove it and then add the new correct version into there. You can't amend something that's in a set. It's immutable in that respect. So let's have a look at some code now. This first bit of code just shows how we can add an item to a set. Here is my original list of books and now I'm adding another book, The Vinyl Detective, to this list. Now it just so happens that when I've run it, it's added it at the end because that's where it's found a convenient space in memory. But adding an item to a list doesn't normally put it at the end. It can put it anywhere. It could put it at the beginning, in the middle, wherever it felt that there was a good space for that. Sets are not ordered. They're not like lists. You, each item in a set has a position, but not in the way that we'd know it from lists and tuples. This means that if we want to remove an item, we can't remove it by looking at its position in the set. What we have to do is to either remove or discard its value. If you remove something and that item isn't in the set, the program will create an error. Whereas if you discard something, no error is created if that item doesn't exist. So usually it's a better idea to use discard, but if you are going to use remove, you need to use something called a try catch, which comes in a far later video. Here what we've got are these two sets. My set contains the vinyl detective because we've added it just now. As you can see, the vinyl detective is in my list of books. If I remove it, my list of books now has that book missing. However, I can discard the same book title from your list of books without generating an error. Your list of books hasn't changed. It's still exactly the way it was when we set it up at the top of the program. But because we use discard, the program is still running. Now we can move on to the next task. Let's suppose that we wanted to find out which books you and I had in common. What have you got that I've got as well? Have we got any interests in common? Well, we can use intersection in the same way as you used intersections in set theory at school. You can say my books dot intersection your books and it will list those titles that it finds in your set and in my set. So it says we both have All the Rage and The Catch, both of which are thrillers, so it seems that we have thrillers in common. But what items do I have that might interest you? Given that we have some interests in common, maybe there's something you'd like to borrow. For that we use the difference. So what's the difference between my books and your books? Well, the difference is that I have Hard Time and Rivers of London. Uh, if you like, you can borrow them. You look like a nice person. 